Hey guys, how you doing? It's Tom. I think it's time we have a discussion about the concepts of liberty and democracy. Now, as you know, it's very important to define our terms at the onset of any conversation. So by liberty, I'm referring to the state of being free within your society without oppressive restrictions being put in place by authority limiting people's way of life, behavior, or political views. Democracy is a system of voting in which the majority rules. Now, of course, when we go through the school system in America, and if you turn on the mainstream media, we're always told that democracy is the be-all, end-all. The people of the world need democracy. The people of America thrive because they live in a democracy. Now, this is the first fallacy, right? Because in America, we live in a constitutional republic. Now, it's a republic because we have elected representatives who represent different areas of the country allegedly representing our needs. Now, it is a democracy in that we vote for our elected officials, so it's a little bit of a mix of a democracy and a republic. But properly defined, America is a constitutional republic. Now, constitutional republic is very important because what the constitutional part refers to is really the Bill of Rights, which guarantees people certain liberty. Now, other countries around the world don't have a Bill of Rights like America, and the Constitution is what really separates America from anywhere else you might want to go. And that could be seen just this week, right? Marine Le Pen, who was a serious contender to become the president of France, sent out um, a tweet this week or posted a picture or something along the lines. I don't know exactly what she did, um, but basically stated that ISIS is just as great a threat to the people of France as the Nazis were. So basically she criticized ISIS, but the powers that be, the ruling class within France, has decided what is hate speech. So because of that, Marine Le Pen is being charged with the crime and can face up to two years in prison for using speech that is not sanctioned by the political establishment. Because freedom of speech isn't guaranteed in a constitution. And that is why the constitution is so important. Now, of course, the American constitution doesn't go far enough. Because if it went far enough, it would outright state, among other things, believe me, I, I might do a whole video um, one day on a constitution that I would implement, a new Bill of Rights. But just one thing that it clearly should state is that the government should not be allowed, and this should be constitutional, should not be allowed to initiate force against any person that has not initiated force against another person or have been alleged to commit fraud against another person. It is the principle of non-aggression. If you have not initiated force against someone, you have not committed fraud against someone else, then no one else, including especially the government, should be allowed to initiate force against you. Now, this is not the case in America. If you just look at the war on drugs, the American government has arrested and imprisoned for sometimes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years, imprisoned countless number of Americans for doing drugs. An alleged crime of putting a substance in your own body without initiating force against anyone else, without committing fraud against another person. And of course, this has had very detrimental effects on society because it's greatly increased the number of children being raised in families um, with one parent who they themselves turned to gang violence, turned to drugs, and it's created a cycle of really destroying the American family unit. Um, not even to mention that Drug addiction should be treated as addiction. Instead, it's being treated as violent crime. And you see this cycle because the government is allowed to initiate force 
violate the liberty of Americans because our Constitution doesn't go far enough. But that being said, the American Constitution does guarantee certain things, right? We have freedom of speech. So if I criticize ISIS in this video, the government can't come arrest me and put me in jail for two years. You see why the people at the top try so hard to constantly attack the Bill of Rights, to attack the Constitution. Because Marine Le Pen criticizes ISIS, and she's facing two years in prison, and she was nearly the president of the country. And in Britain, it, they, the police in Britain spend more time tracking down people of alleged hate crimes, simply criticizing the violent aspects, the radical aspects of Islam that have been imported into the country, which is where Brexit came from, yet Brexit's being ignored from the top. So the police spend more time investigating that than actually investigating ISIS terrorists. But in America, we have freedom of speech. In America, we have a right to bear arms, at least for now. Now, the reason the right to bear arms um, falls in the category of individual liberty, the reason why it's so important is because we have a natural right to defend ourselves. And we need reasonable arms to defend ourselves against that that considers itself authority over us. Now, we're supposed to have a government by the people, but the way it works, right, just look at the war on drugs, we seem to be subservient to the people. In fact, Donald Trump this week stated that he'd like to change the law so that guns could be taken from law-abiding citizens if the government suspects them of having mental illness. Well, what happens when an oppressive government comes in and decides, I don't know, maybe they decide the attacks on religion continues, and they decide anyone who is Catholic, anyone who is Christian, whatever it may be, believes in a mythical god, Therefore, they have mental illness because they get to define mental illness and they could take away the guns. So, we have a right to bear arms, but that right is constantly under attack. And kind of what I just described, right? We have a right to a fair trial. This is why we have a right to a fair trial, right? The government doesn't get to decide that they could just randomly throw someone in prison without due process, without a trial. The government doesn't get to decide they can lock you in a cell for 10 years without trial. The government doesn't get to decide that they can execute someone without trial. The reason trial is important is because it's trial through a jury of your peers. So it's not the government deciding that you're in trouble. It's your peers, the citizens of the United States of America. So if you commit a crime, say you murder someone, you go to trial, and you sit in front of a jury of American citizens, and if that jury of citizens signs off that you were guilty, that they have decided you've committed a crime, the American people have given the government, which is supposed to serve the people, the right to then punish you for that crime. But the government cannot decide to punish you for a crime. At least this is the way it's supposed to be. And this is why you can't just have guns being confiscated because the government decided you don't need due process. It doesn't work that way. So we have a right to bear arms. We have freedom of speech. We have due process. We have a right to privacy, which is constantly ignored, right? The NSA, Edward Snowden, um, just this election cycle in one of the biggest scandals in American history, the Obama administration abused the FISA courts and used them to spy on Obama and Clinton's biggest political opponent, which was President Trump. So they illegally spied on him, or legally spied on him through the FISA courts, completely subverting the American democracy. So, again, these rights aren't necessarily followed by government, but they're supposed to be. And the reason Thomas Jefferson pushed so hard to have a Bill of Rights, they, the Founding Fathers understood that they were going to be violated, but at least it provided the ground so that the people had something they could point to and say that the government has overstepped its authority, the government is doing things that it should not be allowed to do. So we don't live in a democracy where it's just majority rule. We live in a constitutional republic, constitutional being the most important part because it guarantees liberty, the ability to live freely 
without oppressive authority restricting your behavior, your way of life, or your political views. Now, compare that to a society ruled by democracy, right? Because, use South Africa for an example, because this week, Parliament in South Africa voted that they have the authority, again, this violates liberty, so they shouldn't, they don't have the authority based on natural law, but they're, they have what they're going to call authority because they use democracy to subvert liberty, and Parliament voted that the government of South Africa has the right to confiscate and redistribute it and redistribute all white-owned farmland without compensation, mind you. So now the people, the white people that own these farms are going to be um, removed from their land by the government. Everything they have is going to be taken. And if they resist, they will either be imprisoned or executed. Because that's how this goes. Because democracy, this is what happens when democracy becomes more important than individual liberty. You see, individual liberty is what makes us free, not democracy. And this is why we have to get to a point in the United States of America, just like we once separated church from state, we need to separate race from state. All people must live equally under the law, and the law must give the government no authority to violate people's individual liberty. This is how you get a just society, because individual liberty is colorblind. Individual liberty doesn't care if you're white, it doesn't care if you're black. Liberty is white rights. Liberty is black rights. Liberty is Spanish rights. Liberty is gay rights. Liberty is men's rights. Liberty is women's rights. Individual liberty. In fact, if individual liberty would have been implemented correctly from the start, African Americans would have never been enslaved in the United States of America. Because the narrative is that white people enslaved African Americans. What actually happened is government authority was used to subvert individual liberty and take away the natural rights of black people. And because their natural rights were taken away, they were enslaved. So we have to separate race from, race from state in the United States of America and just guarantee individual liberty. And that's how we have a great society. And if you want to know just how fraudulent our government is, just how fraudulent the education system is, just how fraudulent the mainstream media is, look no further than the concepts of democracy versus liberty and how they're projected to us and how democracy is held at the highest regard, but liberty is seldom talked about. And you can see this with the military-industrial complex, right? Because whenever the United States government wants to get us into a war, they talk about oppressive regimes, and they say they're oppressive because people don't get to vote, right? Because we need to go into these countries, we need to go into Syria, we need to go into Iraq, we need to go into Afghanistan, we need to go into Libya, we need to go into wherever. We need to go into Vietnam, and we need to bring them democracy. But what is democracy? Because democracy is just majority rule. Democracy is what I just described in South Africa, right? You just get a majority of people, you get them all angry about something, you tell them that someone else is oppressing them or that someone else has violated them, you get them to vote to take away the liberty of that other group, and you get oppressive government authority. And then the American government uses democracy to put puppet dictators into place because the minds of the masses are very easily controlled through propaganda just look at most people in America, try to have an open and honest, a calm political discussion with them. Most people have no idea how to distinguish what is real from what is false. And most people are completely dominated by the least common denominator, obsessed with race, obsessed with religion, obsessed with sex, obsessed with gender. People are easily controlled. So the military-industrial complex goes in, overthrows a regime, gives the people democracy. But of course, democracy, like in South Africa, can be very dangerous. In certain places of the Middle East, certain groups of people 
will almost always oppress other groups of people. Because if the government, if the media, if the education system, if the military industrial complex really cared about people, if, if that's what American foreign intervention was about, democracy and freedom, they wouldn't say people need democracy. They would say we need to go there and guarantee that these people have liberty. We must guarantee that they have a bill of rights. And when we overthrow that foreign dictatorship, we will guarantee through military force that these people have freedom of speech, that these people have a right to bear arms. We will guarantee that they have freedom of religion, the right to peacefully assemble and protest, the right to petition, that they are guaranteed privacy, and that they are guaranteed fair trials that they cannot be falsely imprisoned by the government, falsely executed by the government. But that's not what we get. Because the military-industrial complex, the politicians, the media, they don't care about democracy and freedom. They care about control. Because if they did, they would talk to you about liberty instead of democracy. And we as a people need to wake up because... It is going to get to a point, it's coming to a head, where we either embrace individual liberty, drop the identity politics, black, white, Spanish, my group, your group, you oppress me, so I need a different set of rules. Just embrace individual liberty. Because if we don't, we are going to go down a very dangerous place as a nation. Because the politicians, the media are going to use those petty differences among us to convince people that they should take away the liberty of certain groups of people, which really just sets the precedent of the government taking away liberty. And by the time we look up, by the time we realize what's happening, we will be slaves. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate your support so much. YouTube could ban me any day now. They've been out of control with the censorship, especially over the last week. Please follow me, Tom FFR News on Twitter, Tom Anderson on Steemit, Tom Anderson on Facebook, FFR News on Facebook, Tom Anderson on Gabs, Tom FFR News on Minds. And if you want to support me financially, really appreciate it, www.patreon.com slash FFR News. Share this link. Thanks, guys.